sketching linear relationships. Here we're going to put everything we've learned so far into practice to sketch linear relationships in a few different ways. So depending on what we're given, we can do it in a variety of ways. Let's look if we're given a table of values. So even if we weren't given a table of values and we're given a rule, we could make our own table of values and do it this way as well. But here we're just going to look if we had the table of values. So if we had the table of values, we could draw up a Cartesian plane and go ahead and plot all of these points in our table of values as if they were coordinates. So all these points, if they were coordinates, just like this. Remember, x comes before y, so this one's minus 2, minus 1, 2. This point would be 0, 1. This point would be 1, 0. And this one would be 2, 1. So we're going to go ahead and plot all those out. Let's draw in some points on our Cartesian plane. And let's see what happens. So first we're going to plot minus 1, 2. So minus 1 for x and 2 for y would be here. 0 for x and 1 for y would be here. 1 for x and 0 for y would be here. And 2 for x and that should be a minus 1, not a 1. So 2 and minus 1 for x minus 1 would be here and then you can see that pattern does form a straight line and we can join them up and that pattern would go on forever and there's our line that we can draw from a table of values what about if we were given just the rule or the equation y equals x plus 1 well we know that whatever is in front of x is our gradient and whatever our number is here by itself is our y-intercept. So this means that our gradient has to be 1, because that's what's in front of x, even though there's nothing there. It means 1x. And our y-intercept is equal to 1 as well. So let's go ahead and plot this. We've got our x-axis and our y-axis. So we know the y-intercept is 1 which is there, Let's put a few more. So we know it's cutting through our y-axis of 1, our y-intercept, and our gradient is 1. It can be helpful to write that as a fraction. So if it's a whole number, you just put it over 1, which means we have 1 over 1. So if the gradient was 2, it would be 2 over 1. If it was 10, it would be 10 over 1. And the reason this is helpful is because gradient is rise divided by the run. And another way to think about it is the great is the line moves up one for every one it runs across. So if we remember it moves up one for every one it runs across. Up one for every one it runs across. Which means it's going through here and here and so forth. And now we can join those up to form our straight line. So that's another way to do it. Let's look at one more way. So we have the equation 2x plus y minus 7 equals 0. So this one isn't in gradient intercept form because gradient intercept form needs to have y as the subject. Remember, gradient intercept form needs to be y equals some number times x plus or minus some other number. So the first thing we can do is put it in that form. So we want to make y the subject. So to do that, we're going to minus 2x from both sides. It's going to leave us with y minus 7 and 0 minus 2x is just minus 2x. 
Now we can plus 7 to both sides. Minus 7 plus 7 is 0. So we get y equals minus 2x minus 2x plus 7 is just minus 2x plus 7 because they're not like terms. And now we have an equation in gradient intercept form, which we could do like last time, but we might do something a bit different. So this method is going to involve finding the x and y intercepts and just joining them together. So to find, well, we now we know what the y-intercept is, because the y-intercept is just the number by itself. So our y-intercept equals 7. But to get our x-intercept, you just have to make y equal to 0, if you remember in our intercept video. So when we make y equal to 0, we get 0 equals minus 2x plus 7. We can minus 7 to both sides. 7 minus 7 is 0. 0 minus 7 is minus 7. And we're just left with minus 2x on this side. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 2 to get x by itself. They're going to cancel out. And x is going to, well, the minus divided by minus is going to be a positive. So we get positive 7 over 2 or 3.5. And that's your x-intercept. That's our x-intercept. And now we know the two intercepts are, we can easily graph the line on our Cartesian plane. So if the y-intercept is 7, we know it's somewhere up here. And the x-intercept is 3.5, which is somewhere over here. I'm going to write it as a fraction, 7 over 2. And all we have to do is join up the y-intercept and the x-intercept. And we have our, our graph of the straight line. Mm -hmm.